there's the language of love and of loving God and God being within. And that's kind of one language. And then there's the language of more, let's say, knowledge-based, wisdom-based, non-duality. It can be more intellectual type teaching. We're discerning between self and not self. We're looking at the seer rather than the seeing. And this can cause confusion. Now, my suggestion is if you're drawn to the path of love, then there's no harm in learning about the path of knowledge, path of wisdom. They're not actually separate paths at all. The two go together totally and beautifully. But sometimes we find that on our journey that one of these paths is speaking louder to us at a point in time than the other. And it can switch, it can flip. So sometimes you're drawn towards the wisdom teachings and sometimes you're drawn towards the knowledge teachings or the intellectual teachings. And other times you're drawn towards more of a heart opening, a love of God. And I would encourage you to follow whatever your heart's leading to at the moment. So when you feel that peace, that love, the knowledge teachings say, oh, that's an experience. See? Whatever you experience comes and goes, and therefore that's not what you are. What you are is that which doesn't come, doesn't go. You are that observing consciousness that's unchanging. And so when you feel that peace and love, that's just illusion. And it's transient. And so don't cling to that. Don't think that's anything special because that's going to come and go. And, you know, so that clinging to that or being interested in that at all is illusion and it will cause suffering and bondage. You see? But the path of love just says, don't worry about that stuff. Just love. You see? Don't worry about is it a feeling? Is it transient? Is it illusion? Is it an ex your, your words, Lynn, was is it an experience? Yes, it's an experience. It's something you experience, right? It might not be a feeling or it might not be emotional and sentimental or whatever, like, like romantic love or something. But it's something that's arising. It is something that's arising. But it's also your true self. And you did say at one point, Lynn, or am I just, am I just, divide, am I just dividing this? Am I just making this into more than it needs to be? Yes. It's just fall in love with God. Which is the same as the I am. But it doesn't have to be the same as the I am. It can be just falling in love with God. The mind will then hear the teachings of the wisdom teachings and say, oh, it's this, it has to be that. And that can be a straitjacket. Those wisdom teachings, at some point in your life, can be illuminating and freeing. And other points, they can be a straitjacket. You think, oh, I need to do the I am. Oh, is, is, there is no within because it's all one. So where's the within? Why am I praying to an external God? Or why am I falling in love with an external God? Or a presence that's apart from me, if it's all non-dual, you see? The mind comes up with these things. Now you'll start to feel that sometimes those questions are perfect for you. But your heart will tell you, you see? And my sense for you is that at the moment, love is the way. And it's been the way for you for many years. So let that continue. Love, I've just put a post on Facebook just like an hour or so ago about love and wisdom, actually, about this very point. I was thinking, gosh, I wonder why I'm doing that, I'm writing that post. I was drawn to write about love and wisdom. Maybe this is why. So have a look at that if you haven't seen it already. But just to fall in love with God is enough. And then what about the self? What about the I am? What well, doesn't matter? You see? It's all the same. It is all the same. Your true nature is love. The veil that you, you talked about, a veil being there, and you just wanted to peel back that veil. And then you could love everything, everyone, something like that, right? But that veil is love. That veil that you're peeling back is made of love. So don't, you don't even have to get rid of it. You don't have to get rid of that veil. You can just fall in love with whatever's happening. And whatever's happening is a manifestation of God. And yes, it comes and goes. So as we don't, care, as we care less and less about the appearances, it doesn't mean we don't, on a relative level, care about them. It just means we're not attached to things on a relative level. We don't care about it in that sense. We're not attached, and we come more and more into God's presence. We are naturally filled with a sense of well-being and happiness and love, and that's that is the, actually that is actually an aspect of our true nature is an aspect of our free 
or carefree nature, when we are in touch with our free, carefree nature, a sense of well-being naturally arises. Now, a non-dual purist might say, well, you know, that's an experience that comes and goes. That's what in Vedanta they call the Ananda Mayakosha, the illusory sheath of bliss, bliss, the illusory covering of happiness, the last obstacle to the self. But when you're in the path of love, you don't worry about such things. We don't have to worry. We don't have to analyze too much. The love is purifying. The love takes all our karma, all our negative tendencies, all our negative karma, transmutes it into positivity. It gives us strength and fortitude to deal with whatever life brings to us. And God has brought us to what, um, love of God. God brings us the gift of falling in love with God. And then when you need the wisdom teachings, you've heard them. Who am I? Who is the seer? What am I? You realize that all this is duality, all this is illusion. The me that is falling in love with God is no different to God. And the love that you're falling in love with God with is just God. So it just ends up being everything that's been experienced and that is all love. That is all bathed in love. That is all suffused with love. It is actually love. The veils, the ego, the apparent ego. There is no ego. There is no bondage. There is only liberation. There is only freedom. This is felt as um, gratitude, humility, compassion, and love. It manifests differently at different times, but that's it. 